286. This is 207. Hi, everybody, and welcome to 207. I'm Rob Caldwell. And I'm Kathleen Shannon. Celebrity hairstylist Orbe has transformed models like Heidi Klum and defined images for stars like Jennifer Lopez. He has contributed to every major magazine and worked on every major fashion show. And he'll share some tips with us right here on 207 coming up. And Jimmy Dunn shared his humor with us last night. Today, he, today he shares his favorite recipe. Again, part of our Comedians in the Kitchen series. Jimmy is making... Cheese, mac and cheese dogs. You're going to want to check this out. This is good stuff. I have a feeling this is going to be a favorite in the Nichols I, house. I think, it, <laughs> yeah, it'll be a big hit with your men. <laughs> but first tonight, the comic book will be taking center stage in Portland this Sunday. More than 70 comic book authors and illustrators will be taking part in panel discussions and workshops at the Maine Comics Arts Festival. Among those on hand will be Jay Piscopo, the man behind The Undersea Adventures of Captain Eli. I sat down with Jay this week and asked him about the state of the comic book industry. I think comics are doing well. I was just in New York at the New York Comic Con and the, the, uh, you know, the, the turnout was incredible. It was amazing. And also something I'm noticing in comics right now is that uh, more family oriented and kid oriented books are kind of uh, bubbling back up to the surface again, which is really good for everybody. What we're seeing in so many media is that the print is going away to the online, but what's happening with comics? Do people still want to hold a comic? Do they still want that tactile sensation? Absolutely, absolutely. That's the feeling I'm getting. They want to be able to see the comic and hold it in their hands. But what the web has done is it's opened it up to creators where they can experiment and start out with their stories and get an audience and build an audience and then go into print. So it's, it's kind of a nice way to transition into print because it is a very risky business and it's very hard to you know, deal with the competition. In terms of characters and storylines, comics, like any other medium that goes through sort of trends, what's sort of hot right now? Well, it's interesting. The movies, I think, because of the superhero movies, are kind of influencing things a bit. But something I am noticing, though, is that the adventure stories that a family can read together and kids, can, kids and parents can read together, almost like the old uh, newspaper adventure strips, right. I'm noticing that's getting a bit more, uh, uh, more popularity and people are starting to notice it a little bit more. And that is right in your wheelhouse because you do one called The Undersea Adventures of Captain Eli. What is that? Well, it's, as a, it's, a, uh, it's everything I love in comics. I grew up with... Uh, you know, with watching Star Trek and Captain America and Superman and all the classics that everybody knows of. And also uh, very influenced by Johnny Quest and Space Ghost and all those great Hanna-Barbera cartoons. Mm -hmm. And so this was a chance for me to coalesce all that stuff. And I also love all classic science fiction, uh, uh, Captain Nemo and you know, Jules Verne, H.G. Wells, that kind of stuff. And uh, it was just an opportunity to kind of jam all that stuff into one big story and kind of create the kind of stuff I grew up with. Now, some people who are watching this interview are saying, wait, Captain Eli, that rings a bell. Wait, that's, that's a root beer. Wait, is it a comic book or a root beer? What is the synergy there? Well, we, Captain Eli started out as a root beer. And from the label, uh, Fred Forsley, who had started the root beer, said, gee, uh, I'd like to take this character and develop him and do something with him. And at first he said, well, let's, let's make a TV show. And I'm like, well... Let's, let's go a little slower than that. <laughs> and uh, that's where we started doing the web comic and actually started creating uh, placemats for restaurants, advertising the root beer and putting Captain Eli in there. And so it's been a slow evolution, actually, over five, six years. And you say it's kind of fun because when you go to events, when you go out and meet the public at various kinds of things, there's usually some Captain uh, Eli's root beer there and other comic book artists say, wow, that's pretty cool. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is. They, they, they're always like, what's up with the soda? Where'd you, how'd you get the soda in there? Because, yeah, sugar is a great attraction. Actor and, uh, and it, but it's a very it's an all natural product and it's great so we don't we don't overdo it that way but it's it's there and it's nice to have. So. Well, you're just one of the artists who will be at the comic books the main comic arts festival tomorrow mm -hmm. at uh, the Ocean Gateway in Portland. What's going to be happening? Well, it's fantastic. There's this I don't think Portland's ever had an event this big before with comics and there's uh, 70 creators that are coming there locally and from all over the place. Um, Lincoln Pierce, who does um, Big Nate for the uh, Sunday uh, Telegram, is mm -hmm. going to be there, and uh, it's fantastic. One of my favorite old uh, guy from, I don't want to call him old, but from the, <laughs> from the old days of comics, uh, uh, Joe Staten will be there, who created E-Man, and he's working, uh, creating some great, some, some great pulp characters right now, so it's going to be fun to see everybody. And you're actually going to be doing a workshop. You actually do a lot of workshops where you show kids and adults 
how to draw a comic, right? Yeah, basically, well, basically, there I'm not going to be doing a workshop, okay. actually. Uh, we, we do have uh, Laura Richter, who has created a lesson plan around the Captain Eli uh, graphic novels. We'll be doing a presentation with Peter Gutierrez, who is also someone who uh, shows teachers how to use graphic novels with teaching and, you know, teaching geography as well as literacy and things like that. But yeah, I do uh, workshops where I teach cartooning and a sort of a hands-on uh, kind of program where kids and adults who do join in can learn the basics of drawing. And you know, I, one thing I hear all the time is, "I can't draw. I can't draw." And I'm like, "Well, you can. You know, or I can't draw a straight line. So get a ruler. You know, there's ways of drawing. And it's a wonderful uh, communication medium." When you and I were kids, and maybe when our, or no doubt when our parents were kids, uh, the the general was, "Ah, you're reading comics. That's trash. Get rid of it. Throw it away and read a good book." Has the attitude changed? Do teachers now feel that comic books and comic strips are a good way to get kids interested in reading? Oh, absolutely. And it's a, not only for reading, but also as a tool to get involved in other curricula, uh, dealing with uh, art, uh, uh, mathematics, geography, science. And it's really uh, be it's becoming more and more accepted as a tool. Do any illustrators still use pen and ink, or is everything now? <laughs> On the computer, oh, I would yes, absolutely. There's a, everyone I would say has even people who work on a computer have a traditional approach to what they do. Uh, you know, learning traditional techniques. A lot of people, I mean, when they draw, will uh, draw on paper and scan into the computer and enhance in there. Uh, some people will draw right into the computer as well. But it's usually uh, most most people who work have some, uh, you know, academic or basic training. So I'm glad to know that tradition is not dying. Yes, it won't die. It can't die. I think it's growing. You know, I think it is. Obviously, it's a, it's a comic book. It's a lot bigger now than when I was a kid and when you were a kid. So hopefully they'll be around. I love them. After church, my father would take me and I was able to get a, a, I was allowed to get a comic book and they were 10 cents. That's how old I am. What would you buy? <laughs> Usually the Archies. I loved the Archies. I knew it. I, knew <laughs> I like Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kathy's going to be at the Comics <laughs> Arts Festival looking for the old Archie books. No, she's not. But the Comics Arts Festival takes place this Sunday, not Saturday. I misspoke in the interview. Sunday from 10 to 5 at the Ocean Gateway Terminal in Portland. Admission is just $5, and there's no charge for kids 12 and under. And we've put links to more information on the main Comics Arts Festival, as well as Jay Piscopo, in the 207 section of our website.